Hello guys, uh, I hope that you are doing well with this pandemic at the same time the devastation of this typhoon. So we are blessed by our almighty that this typhoon is now going far from the Philippines and there is another typhoon that is coming. So I hope that you are in good condition. You are doing well today. So of course, even though there is a pandemic and there is typhoon, we need to continue our discussion with regards to forensic chemistry and our fourth topic is uh, we are talking about semen, seminal stain and other uh, stains. So don't mind my video because I am just celebrating November yan, araw ng mga kalulwa. So I just uh, put something that is uh, related to uh, November, yan, Halloween. So it's like that I I am a ghost on my video. So wag niyong pakilaman. Nakikiuso lang tayo. So happy Halloween in each and everyone. So talking about semen, seminal stain, and other stains, we are going to focus on the topic that is uh, focusing on semen and seminal stain. So what is the... Uh, what is the importance or what is the relationship of semen and seminal stain in forensic chemistry and, crimi and in criminal investigation? So examination of semen and seminal stain is uh, very important with regards to the investigation of sexual offenses. Uh, those sexual offenses, we may talk about rape, adultery, so adultery, sodomy, bestiality, and sexual homicide, and so on and so forth. That's why semen and seminal stain is uh, uh, entering on our topic because they are very important with this uh, kind of cases, especially when it, we are talking about sexual offenses. These are the pieces of evidence, the best evidence that we can present in the court proceedings in order not to put justice on the uh, victim and of course we will now incarcerate the person who committed the crime or the perpetrator who committed the crime. So take note that semen or if you are talking about semen and sperm, they are not the same from one another. Diba? If you are an ordinary person, if you are talking about semen and sperm, you are now using them interchangeably. Meaning, semen and sperm, if you are the ordinary person, you are using this term interchangeably. Meaning, it doesn't, it seems that they don't have any differences. Pero if we are talking about forensic chemistry or the allied sciences when it comes to medicine, semen and sperm is not the same. They are different from one another. So if we are talking about semen, these are uh, the composition of cells or in composition of cells, we have a white fluid that consists of spermatozoa. So in putting it into a simple context, just imagine that there is a pool, lot of tadpole. That is what we call semen. There is a water and there is tadpole on that area. So we term it or we call it as semen. So there is a water that is, uh, we describe as the white fluid, the spermatozoa that we are talking, that is the tadpoles uh, on, the, on that particular object. So we call that a semen. The composition of cell, the composition of a white fluid that we are talking about as seminal uh, fluids, and we are talking about spermatozoa that will now represent the tadpoles. If we are talking about uh, sperm, that is not the same. Sperm is just part of semen. And sperm is also termed as its spermatozoa. That is the tadpoles and the basic explanation in the composition of semen. So take note that semen and sperm is not the same. Semen is the composition of different elements on the reproductive organ of a uh, male person. Diba? Of a male person. It comprises of a white fluid that is called a seminal fluid. Uh, it is comprises of epithelial cells and it comprises of spermatozoa that we call as sperm or sperm cell in other terms. If you are talking about sperm, that is only uh, regard to spermatozoa that only refers to the tadpoles. For the 
uh, parts of the semen that is discussed a while ago, that is the seminal fluid. Number one, part of semen is seminal fluid. That is uh, the uh, alkaline odor, meaning it doesn't taste uh, or it doesn't smell bad. It is uh, neutral when you are going to smell this thing that we call uh, seminal fluid. It is viscous, gelatinous and sticky. Yes, it is sticky when you are now holding this seminal fluid. So there are uh, cellular elements when we are talking about semen. There is what we call the spermatozoa or we call or we term it as sperm cell. So sperm cell that is a spear shape, small object that is a spear shape in which its tail, its tail is 10 times longer than its head. That is the spermatozoa or sperm cell or in basic we call it as tadpoles. Diba? If you are talking with your friends, you are calling it a tadpoles. But if you are talking it in its legal uh, terminologies, or if we are talking about forensic chemistry in its allied sciences, we term it as a sperm cell, or med uh, on its medical term that is the spermatozoa. There is epithelial cells. If you are talking about epithelial cells, these are coming from blood cells, uh, urinary urinary part uh, on our uh, body organs and so on and so forth. What is the purpose of this epithelial cell? So this epithelial cells is a barrier in which it will now separate our internal from our or our outside from our uh, inside. So it will now uh, serve as barrier in order now to avoid viruses that will now going to enter on our body. And lastly, we have crystal of choline or what we call lichatin. For there are cases in which if a male per, male person ejaculate and there is no spermatozoa, meaning there is no tadpole. So what are the reasons in which if a male person will now ejaculate, there will no spermatozoa that will produce? So there are three explanations on that. Number one, we are talking about azospermia. If we are talking about azospermia, the male ejaculates. But uh, the thing that comes out on him is only seminal fluids. There is now the absence of the spermatozoa or the tadpoles that we are talking. So if there is now a discharge and there is now the absence of the spermatozoa or what we call the tadpoles, we term it as asospermia. Yeah. So meaning if this male has this kind or yes, he has this kind of disorder, it is impos impossible for him to reproduce. Mahirapan na siyang magkaanak because his, uh, yes, his ejaculation when it comes to his semen, of course, there is now the absence of the spermatozoa. And of course, we all know that the spermatozoa, that is the thing that will now fertilize the egg cell in order to reproduce or produce a baby or a human or a fetus. So that is as spermia. Basic, there is the absence of spermatozoa, the absence of tadpoles. So if we will be term, if we will be describing it when we are again talking on the pond, there is a pond, there is a water, but there is the absence of tadpoles. And take note, in order for a male to reproduce, if he will now having a carnal knowledge with a woman, the sperm or the semen should have what we call the composition of all. We, there is now the seminal fluid, there's, there is now the uh, spermatozoa and other elements or and other parts of the semen. If there is the absence of one, of course, the male cannot reproduce. Ang tawag na, we term it as uh, sterile, meaning baog, diba? So number one, azospermia, basic, you should remember that is the absence of spermatozoa or the absence of tadpoles. If you are talking about, uh, yeah, basic, yung, if you, we can, if we will be explaining it on the simplest sense, yan, yan kasi yung sinasabi ninyo, di ba? That if you are going to explain our discussion in YouTube, 
uh, commonly the teacher or the instructor will be explaining it in English in which you can understand. So that is my main purpose in explaining it or comparing it on the basic environment that we can consider in order for you to easily understand. So going back to azospermia, if we are looking into pan, pool of tadpoles, we can describe azospermia as the presence of water and the absence of the tadpoles. So that is the azospermia, the absence of spermatozoa. There is only the presence of seminal fluids but the absence of spermatozoa. So if you are talking about oligospermia, this is now the uh, abnormal production of spermatozoa. Or yes, the, uh, uh, the abnormal production of sperm cells or spermatozoa. So ordinarily, a male can reproduce 100 million of spermatozoa in order for him to be considered as yeah, fertile. Pero this male can only reproduce 20 million of spermatozoa. So it is lacking when it comes to the minimum or minimum quantity that a male can reproduce when he ejaculates. Diba? So uh, take note, minimum. In order to consider a male to be fertile, he should produce 100 million of spermatozoa. But if we are talking about is as uh, oligospermia, the male can only produce 20 million of uh, spermato spermatozoa, meaning he is considered as infertile, meaning mahirapan siya. There is a chance in order to reproduce but 1%. Out of 100%, he can only produce 1%. Diba? So that is what we call oligospermia. There is now the uh, law production, low concentration of sperm in a seminal fluid. So if you are talking about the last in which we can consider that a semen has the absence of a spermatozoa, that is the necrospermia. Necro, from the term itself, necro means dead. Diba? So in necrospermia, the tadpoles or the spermatozoa is dead or they are immobile or they are not moving. So uh, the male can produce spermatozoa, but upon the production, the spermatozoa, or they are dead, or the spermatozoa is not moving. So that is the three characteristics in which a semen is, uh, or the semen has, is the abs or there is the absence of spermatozoa. So going on, or moving on, how can we collect, preserve, pack, or transfer semen stained specimen? So that is very important. Take note that these are biological evidence. This is the most prioritized species of evidence in the crime scene because they can be easily perished. So in order to secure the integrity of the pieces of evidence, take note that if uh, in your assessment, if you are an investigator and it is related to sexual offenses, you need to consider, of course, those things that those pieces of evidence can be located. Diba? So if uh, that is sexual offense, immediately you should think about the panty, the underwear of the victim and the perpetrator, or anything that you think that uh, it is uh, the... Uh, biological evidence, just for example, the semen, or we are pertaining to semen, uh, we can easily identify or we can easily locate them because technically that is the things or that is the fabric in which the species of evidence can be transferred, can be located, or can be deposited. So, basic. If that is sexual offenses, okay, the underwear. If there is condom, you can collect condom. If there is bed sheet, you can collect those bed sheets. So that is the basic uh, pieces of evidence that can we can collect in order to uh, trace pieces of evidence that we can now track down semen or seminal stain. And take note, if we are going to pack the apparel or the clothing, 
that is collected in the crime scene and there is a allegedly there is now a depo uh, deposited seminal stain or there is now a trace of seminal stain on that clothing make sure to avoid friction how can you avoid friction don't fall on the area in which there is allegedly uh semen that is deposited on the apparel or on that clothing so just leave it on the original status on the original appearance don't fold it so how can you easily identify in which there is now a seminal stain on that area of course it's either it is stiff it's either there is a smell on it it's either you can see on it if that is a white fabric and so on and so forth and take note that uh, you need to mark on it in order for you to be uh, yeah, to be familiarized with the uh, part in which the pieces of evidence uh, is located next uh, if there is um, apparel there are lots of apparel or there are lots of clothing that is collected at crime scene uh, the standard operating procedure is don't uh, place them uh, on a one container without placing a cardboard or any separating object or any material that can separate them from one another so if you are going to pack them on a one container you should place one clothing on the bottom portion then you are going to place a cardboard or you are going to place uh what we call that a paper or anything that will now divide them from one another in order not to avoid uh friction from each other next if that is a, a small object uh, just like hair or anything that is related to semen or seminal stain and that is a small object or minute object you should place them on a test tube or on a vial in order for them to be preserved next um, if there there is a pieces of evidence that is now undergoing uh, the state or the process of uh, being dry from liquid they are now go uh, they are now yeah they are now going to dry so the standard operating procedure is for you to air dry don't uh, apply blower don't put heat on it in order for it to be dry so the standard operating procedure is for you to dry those specimen in uh, not in natural uh, environment in which you will just put hang it on a place in which air can pass uh, in and out of it in order for it to dry wag niyo papabilisin yung dry process ng specimen or nung stained semen seminal stain on the clothing kasi it will now destroy the specimen or the pieces of evidence if you are going to do that so take note that it should be air dried next if it is fluid or if you respond you responded to the crime scene and you have detected or you have collected uh, seminal stain or semen that is uh, still in liquid state so you need to place it on a test tube and uh, in order to preserve it you can add a, a few drops of 10 percent solution of formalin in order to avoid the semen to undergo the putrefaction stage so that is the way on how to collect preserve uh, pack and transfer seminal or semen stained specimen for the examination of semen and uh, seminal stain there is what we call physical examination of seminal stain if you are talking about physical examination we will judge we will just judge those pieces of evidence by using our naked eye so number one semen when dry gives stiff starchy feeling to the cloth and produce a slight deepening of the color with the disappearance of the odor the stiffness disappears if a specimen is not properly dried in open air presence of moisture bacteria will act on the protein constituent or semen digest the dried protein thus destroy its stiffness 
also the bacteria will remove the albuminous ma matter or also disintegrate the spermatozoa. So that is uh, what I'm taking uh, talking a while ago. That if you are going to examine a semen, commonly if it is dry, it will now give uh, it's either starching. If you are going to uh, release your mucus, yung sipuninyo, and you will be uh, placing it on your handkerchief, and it is air dry. Uh, that is the same texture. That is the same feeling when you are. We are talking about semen, so it is stiff, and there is a starchy feeling if you are now feeling it on a clocking. So, as and as I uh, said a while ago, it should be air dry. Because if those specimen is not air dry, it will now destroy the integrity integrity of the pieces of evidence. And take note: if those pieces of evidence will be fold, of course the spermatozoa will break, and that is now uh, what we call that. It will now destroy the integrity of the evidence because the most important thing in which the spermatozoa is now destroyed. So the pieces of evidence will now be useless. It cannot be uh, utilized for further examination of the specimen in order to now to test it for uh, different examination for semen and seminal stain and including the DNA analysis of it because the spermatozoa is now broken and it cannot be examined. So that is the importance why you need to uh, avoid folding the area in which the spermatozoa is present or the deposit of the semen or the uh, semen that is deposited on the clothing. That is now the disadvantage if you fold the area in which the semen is deposited. Okay, uh, if you are collecting pieces of evidence and there is a semen or seminal stain or stain that is deposited on that area, there is a standard operating procedure that there you should avoid the friction, the application of friction on it. Uh, the basic uh, friction that you can apply on it, if you are now going to fold it, you will now, there is now the danger of uh, breaking the spermatozoa in which take note that spermatozoa is very important uh, when we are now talking about the examination of semen, if we are now going to apply chemicals on it. Because it will, the essence of the uh, examination will be yan, mawawala na because the most important thing in the semen that is the spermatozoa is no damage. Next, so seminal stain exhibit uh, bluish fluorescence under the ultraviolet light. Yan. So if you are going to enter the crime scene in which you can't locate, there is uh, impossible for you to locate the uh, seminal stain that is deposited at the crime scene so you can also use ultraviolet light because if you are now going to uh, yeah, if you are now going to place ultraviolet on the area in which there is uh, suspected that there is a uh, seminal stain or seminal fluid that is deposited in that area there will now be a bluish fluorescent if it is positive to seminal stains Next, uh, physical, if you are looking uh, it without the aid of uh, ultraviolet light, you can, uh, you can notice a grayish white or sometimes yellowish stain, which is typical that is a seminal fluid. So if you're using your naked eye, you are just looking into fabric and you chance upon a grayish white or a yellowish stain, possibly or there is a probability that that stain may be a seminal fluid if you are now going to uh, collect pieces of evidence in which the crime scene or the crime that is committed is related to sexual offense. Next, have appearance of outline or con contour mark, map and may have reddish tint in case of old man. So if you are talking about old man, there is now discharge coming from this old man. Commonly, the appearance of the discharge of this old man can be a reddish tint. Medyo pula-pula ang appearance niya. For another, so we talk 
uh, about physical examination a while ago. Now we are now talking about the chemical examination of seminal stain. So number one test uh, for seminal stain that we're going to utilize or that is now utilizing chemicals, that is the fluorescence. Fluorescence, Florence, I should say, Florence test. Uh, that is named uh, to Dr. Florence of Leeson because he introduced this kind of test. So what are the reagents that is uh, utilized in this uh, examination or in this, yes, in this examination? So we have the Florence reagent. So what are the composition of Florence reagent? We have the 1.65 grams of potassium iodide and 2.5 grams iodine uh, in 30 cc of water. For the procedure, in, the, in this examination, number one, cut the portion of the stain and divide into small bits, then soak it in a saline solution. So if this is the proud fabric, you need to cut it and you are going to cut it into small pieces and soak it in a saline solution. So it is uh, slightly the same if you are talking about the chemical test that is now uh, utilized in order to examine the presence of blood in a a stained material or in a clothing and so on and so forth, they have something alike or they are uh, the same from one another. Uh, the difference is this one is examining blood and this one is examining uh, semen or seminal stains. Next, transfer it into slide, tease and evaporate the fluid. So how can you uh, tease and evaporate the fluid? So that is by applying or that there is now a heat below it and just wait for it in order for the fluid to evaporate. Next, add a drop of Florence reagent and cover slip and examine it under a microscope. So there is a glass light. You're going to put those seminal stain that is, uh, or fabric that is cut into pieces that is placed in a saline solution and you are going to transfer it into slide. You are going to tease it in order to remove the fluid on it. And after that, you are going to place a cover slip and you are now going to examine it on a microscope. So the appearance, if it is positive to semen uh, in the microscope, you are now going to see a crystal of choline perudide, which are dark brown, rhombic or needle shape that occur singly or in cross or even group in cluster. It resembles hymen crystal in shape, size, and color. So students, uh, I am always uh, reiterating that if I am going to discuss and you are just using your imagination, of course, the internet is free. You have free access on the internet. So if you want to see the actual appearance of this crystal of choline perudai, you need to search for it. It is, uh, what you call that? if I will be spoon feeding the information to you. So this is just a basic assignment for you. If you are uh, going to watch this video or you are watching this video, so just uh, search for what is the appearance of crystal of chulin peridine. Next, um, for the limitation of the fluorescence test, number one, um, sometimes there is a presence of seminal fluid but uh, the test is negative. That is because the, uh, or the negative, of course, uh, or never mind, I will be explaining it later on. Just let's go for the limitation of the fluorescence test. So letter A, for the clothes with seminal stains are not dried thoroughly, so chlorine perodite is decomposed completely, so the result of negative. So yeah, if you didn't air dry the clothing that is allegedly there is a seminal stain on it, if you didn't air dry thoroughly, of course, uh, it will be negative from uh, fluorescence test. Next, if stain is wet and mixed with blood. So if the stain is wet and mix, mixed with blood, of course, uh, it will be negative to fluorescence test because uh, of course, it is contaminated with other biological evidence. Uh, after 24 hours, it is negative or yes, after 24 hours, it is negative 
due to rapid decomposition, but still spermatozoa can be detected. So that is the limitation of the test. If it is uh, the seminal stain is 24 hours above, of course, it cannot detect the presence of spermatozoa or the uh, seminal fluid, but still it can detect what we call the spermatozoa or the tadpoles. Next, even after long period from two and a half years, it will give positive result with fluorescence test, provided thoroughly dried and preserved and if free from blood and other albuminous substance. So it is uh, what we call, it is conflicting. Sabi mo sir, uh, 24 hours, uh, it is impossible to detect. Uh, it can only detect spermatozoa. And now you are claiming that it can detect as long as, uh, or it can detect as long as two and a half years. Yes, that is true. If the uh, specimen is thoroughly dry, that is what the statement is talking about. So if it is not thoroughly dry, the specimen can only be examined less than 24 hours. After that, you can only detect for the spermatozoa. But if the specimen is thoroughly dried and preserved, it can last for two and a half years. Take note of it. The limitation of the test is for 24 hours, but uh, if the specimen is properly dried and preserved, it can last for two and a half years. Yes, it will include as limitation of the test because there is now uh, a criteria in which the specimen should be thoroughly dried and preserved. So that is the limitation. What if you didn't thoroughly dry and you didn't preserve the specimen? So immediately, the specimen that you have collected or the pieces of evidence that you have collected should, of course, will be negative. Diba? Because you didn't thoroughly dry and put preservatives on it in order for it to be preserved. So it will fall under limitation. So it will become a strength if the pieces of evidence that is collected, even though it is not uh, preserved, even though it is not thoroughly thoroughly dried, it can last for two and a half years. It can be a strength, but it is a limitation because uh, it, con it can only reach two and a half years provided that the pieces of evidence is dried and preserved. Next, for barbarous test, the reagent or the chemical that is used is a saturate, saturated aquayu, uh, aqueous or alcoholic solution of picric acid. So the procedure, you are going to soak a piece of stain material in a 2.5% solution of trichloroacetic acid for one hour in the test tube. Centrifuge the test tube. So there is now a device that is now going to utilize. That is what we call the centrifuge. The centrifuge is a equipment in which you are going to place a specimen. It will spin very fast and it will now separate the different element that is present on that uh, biological uh, evidence. Next, get the clear liquid. So yan. It will now separate different parts of the biological evidence. So the requirement is you just or you will just collect the clear liquid part in if the centrifuge stop. You will just collect the clear part of it and add an equal amount of saturated aqueous and alcoholic solution on picric acid on a glass slide and the same procedure. You are going to observe it in a microscope if the uh, white or clear object is now mixed with the, the reagent that is now uh, used in barbarous tests, so you're now going to uh, observe it on a microscope in which you should observe this uh, color and shape and other what we call description in order for it to be positive from uh, semen. So for the positive result, there is a crystal that is slender yellow tinted, rhomboid needles with obtuse angle or appear as ovoid crystal. These crystals are made of specimen picric. So that is now the appearance. So uh, just what I said a while ago 
if you are curious, if you are just imagining on what is this, uh, what we call rhomboid needles with obtuse angle, so the internet is free for you to search for what is the appearance of it. And take note, for barbarous test is almost is specific for human specimen. The seminal stain as old as six years are said to respond to the test. This test is carried out with uh, fresh, dried, or dissolved semen. So this uh, test is very, uh, what we call that, it's very good because even though the specimen or the semen that is collected is uh, six years old, it can still uh, provide a positive result if you are now going to uh, examine it through barbarous test. Next, for acid phosphatase test, uh, you are going to use a reagent that is 100 milligrams of alpha naphthyl phosphoric acid and 200 milligrams of printamine fast blue, or what we call Raju and EMR. Or uh, those person claims, or I am hard up in looking for the reagent that is utilized for acid phosphatase test. And uh, upon uh, scanning of documents, I chance upon the uh, work of Raju and Ayangar in 1964 that the reagent that is used in acid phosphatase test is the 100 milligram alpha naphthalene and the 200 milligrams of brentamine fast flu. So, for the procedure, you are going to moisten the uh, with water a piece of filter paper, the swab and swab the stained area with the filter paper. The acid phosphatase test will transfer to the filter paper and add a drop of 2 alpha naphthalene phosphoric acid and brentamine fast blue. And for the positive result that is purple color, uh, purple color is indicative of acid phosphatase. For another test that is uh, related or it is the same or there is now a difference or that is a kind of acid phosphatase test, uh, that is what we call the alternative acid, acid phosphatase test. So the reagent that is used is different from the first version. That is, So this test is utilizing 23 grams of sodium chloride, 0 0.55 milligrams or ml of glacial acetic acid. There is 2 grams of sodium acetate trihydrate in 90 ml water, a suspension of 30 milligrams of anthraquinone or anthraquinone, uh, one diazonium, diazonium chloride, and 50 grams of calcium, one naphthyl phosphate in 1 ml of 1% aerosol. For the procedure, you are going to treat the stained area in water bath with pH 5 containing alpha naphthalene phosphoric acid as a substance and anthroquinone one diazonium chloride. So for the positive result, that is orange red pigment. And for the principle of the test, the alpha alphanatol or aptanaptol by the acid phosphatase combines with diazonium salt to form the color. The reaction takes place for 30 seconds on the first stain. So it is very fast. When we are uh, using alternative acid phosphatase test, uh, it will be uh, the result will be fast if the specimen that you are going to examine is fresh. So for the limitation of the test, if blood light lightens the time but does not enter, or blood light lightens or lintens the time but does not interfere. So that is just a limitation. If there is a blood on the specimen that you are going to examine, 30 minutes or 30 seconds will be extended. So you will wait for the reaction uh, for a longer span of time, pero it doesn't interfere with the result, but that is uh, the limitation or it is considered a lim limitation of this, of this um, uh, examination because if there is blood that is present on the uh, specimen, it will now lengthen the time that you are going to wait for the positive result. Next, for the microscopic examination, 
of semen and seminal stain. The procedure, you are going to transfer a drop of specimen to a glass slide. Next, add a drop of water or saline solution and cover it with a cover slip. Examine under high power objective. Observe for the presence of, of spermatozoa. So for this terminology, it is basic. I know that you have undergone general chemistry, so this terminology is very basic. So determination of spermatozoa in seminal stain, number one, a piece of uh, material is this on a slide in a drop of water. Allow the smear to dry, then stain with Lofier methylene blue for a minute. Wash the water, dry, and examine under the microscope. For the limitation of the test, the absence of sperm does not prove that the stain have not been produced by human semen. So that is really a uh, limitation. Next, elements which may obstruct detection of spermatozoa is the nature of the fabric. So, papili or maarte itong examination because it only choose a... Uh, specific fabric in order for it to uh, have a positive result on it. The age of the stain, so the most recent will now yield positive, so the most old or the old the specimen, of course, it will be negative even though there is the presence of uh, spermatozoa or presence of semen. Next, condition to which the stain was exposed before reaching the laboratory, so it's either the condition is uh, it is not uh, properly packed, it is not properly placed on a container, it is uh, exposed to extreme heat and so on and so forth. So condition is also a consideration if, if it will yield positive or negative result. Next, handling of the specimen. Of course, that is very important. If you mishandle the specimen, it will yield negative result even though there is positive or there is the presence of semen. Next, some med medical jurists believe that this can be no semen without the presence of spermatozoa, but not true in case of aspermia and oligospermia. So yes, of course, that is again a limitation of this test. For the biolog biological examination of semen and seminal stain, so for the limitation of this test, the bacterial action that produces disintegrates the spermatozoa and seminal stain is equally effective in decomposing and digesting the protein constituent of uh, protein constitu constituents completely disintegrate cannot possibly give positive precipitation reaction. So uh, they are talking about the bacteria or the bacteri ba bacteriological uh, action on the specimen. If there is bacteria present on the specimen or seminal stains, of course, uh, the time passes by, of course, the bacteria will now eat or it will now destroy the important cells in the specimen in which it will now yield negative result in this biological examination of semen and seminal stain if it, the examination will now, uh, the examination will undergo a day or days, weeks, and so on and so forth. The longer you are going to examine this specimen, it will now yield yet negative result because of the bacteriological action in the specimen. Next, for the other stain that can we can examine for the interest of medical legal interest, for the medical legal interest. So we can examine stain that is called as obstetrical and genealogical stains. So what are those or what are these? This refers to the examination of scene of the crime scene of uh, criminal abortion, infanticide, and sex offenses that may lead to the discovery of bed linen, towel, chemise, skirts, mattresses, and blanket, cherry, which have stains. So that's the pieces of evidence in which we can detect what we call obstetrical and genealogical stains. If we are talking about um, biological evidence that is present on the crimes that, uh, yes, crimes that is uh, committed, we can uh, extract pieces of evidence that is considered as obstetrical, obstetrical and genealogical on the kind of pieces of evidence. Next, we have excrement, or that is the waste on our body. 
that is our feces. So the color of our feces or the color of the feces of the adult, we can describe it as yellowish brown and infant that is greenish yellow. Paints also is very important, uh, especially if that is a uh, hit and run incident. The paint of the vehicle that is deposited on the body or on the road when this vehicle uh, hit the victim or the vehicle or anything in which the vehicle then uh, run. Uh, Yes, tinakbuhan niya or tinakasan nila yung kanilang victim. So, we can examine the paint. And uh, the paint on the car is, of course, unique. It is only present on this type of cars or it is only present with this kind of brand and so on and so forth. So, that is now a piece of evidence that can be utilized because some vehicles have the same or has different uh, strands or that has different composition when it comes to their paints in which it is also unique from other vehicle in which we can examine this paint in which we can determine this paint where it came from so if that is hit in run incident we can examine the paint and if we have recovered the vehicle we can cross match it and uh, we can determine the composition of this paint from the vehicle that's allegedly uh, bump or hit the uh, person or a car or a property and so on and so forth. So meaning a paint of the car is unique from one another or the composition, the paint composition of every car is different from one another. Next, we have rust stain. Why are we including rust stain? Because uh, rust stain or the appearance of rust stain is the same when it comes to blood. Meaning, if you are not going to chemically analyze this stain, you can uh, miss uh, evaluated this pieces, this stain as blood. Not knowing that this uh, pieces of evidence is just a rust stain. Next, synthetic dyes, of course. Uh, when it comes to the Dyes uh, can also resemble uh, old blood stain. That's why uh, there is a need for chemical analysis of this stain in order to separate them if they are really real blood or they are other stains that is related to rust or synthetic dyes. And we have stain or vegetable and fruit origin. This resembles blood that may produce by fruit juice and vegetables. So that is the same. If you're going to analyze it on a microscope, you can see uh, similarities when it comes to blood. But if you are now going to use chemicals in order to confirm if this is blood or not, it will become negative because there are some stain that is coming from vegetable and fruits in which they have the same composition with blood but if you are going to exam confirm it if it is blood it will become negative because it has only the same appearance if it will be going to examine in a microscope but it is not blood next uh, almost all the above can differentiated from blood stain by action of chemicals the above give reaction while blood does not so yes that is true. That is the thing that, has, that I am talking about. So if you're going to examine it as if that they are the same but blood, but if you're going to apply chemicals, if you're going to confirm it, it is not blood. So that's all for the discussion of semen, seminal stain, and other uh, stain. So if you have questions, uh, you can reach me on my uh, messenger, you can reach me on our uh, themes or anything, you can text me if you want. So that's all for today. Uh, I hope you are well, I hope you are safe. And just a reminder, always follow the protocol that is given by the government and have a great day. God bless us all.